Hey everyone, for part two of my interior refresh on my 2001 Suburban, I'm going to install seat covers. Now, I didn't just install any seat covers. I did a lot of research into what I thought would be the best fit for me and for what I was trying to accomplish with the vehicle. Um, they were about $200. I got them from realtrucks.com, I think, and they are called tactical seat covers, I believe. And what that is, is I guess, they're made out of some type of high durable waterproof um, Kevlar material and they've got a lot of molly strips in the back for you to hang things on like flashlights, binoculars, um, ammunition, whatever you want. But I really liked the look. I had installed them in my uh, 2004 Avalanche, black ones on that because the seats were black. And I really liked the look so I went ahead and I bought a second set for this. Now they're, they're custom made to fit these seats. But you'll see in the video, sometimes that can be a little, little difficult to get on. But um, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you learned something. Maybe these are the right seat covers for you, maybe not. Um, but uh, if you want to take on something like this, I do show you how to do it and hopefully save you some time. But for yourself, don't be intimidated. Just go out, get busy. Take care. Okay. So I've got pretty much everything out of it. Um, so I can clean everything thoroughly it needs it as you can see though the seats aren't all that bad somehow in spite of all the usage I gave them um, they did survive 10 years more and didn't really get much worse now they did split here but I, what I did was I put some leather between there and uh, used leather glue that was several years ago I've glued this back together and it's held pretty well. Um, it's very dirty. Uh, you know, it's a work truck. It's full of sawdust. It's full of mulch and anything else that I carried in it. Um, but I didn't tear anything back here. The headliner is still good except for around the sunroof, which I'll fix. <laughs> Um, years ago, I upgraded all the interior lighting to LEDs, and that still all works and looks good. So I'm going to vacuum it. <clears throat> this is all the stuff I got out of it, um, including a huge bag of coins. Uh, maps. You know, it's good to have maps when you're on a road trip. Um, don't rely completely on your GPS because, sure, it'll tell you where to, how to get somewhere, but... Um, you may want to find a different route. And all the tools, I got toolboxes, crates full of tools. Um, this guy has to come out. This is, you know, the funny thing is I'm not 100% sure where this thing even came from. When I bought this, it had a third row seat in it. I guess this was always in it, I don't know, but somehow it ended up in a garage and uh, I didn't find it till I moved. And then I put it back in. I'm not sure what happened here. It certainly looks like bleach got on it somehow. So I'll just dye that um, some darker color. I probably have something that'll that'll work just to make it go away. But the wood will cover all this. Um, but I want it real clean. I'm going to try to fix all these scuff marks and dirt. So, yeah, next step. Um, I'm going to vacuum it. Uh, there is a little cubby here. I got a flashlight in here. I've had this thing for ages and I, I've had it for at least 10 years and it still works. It still holds a charge. But um, yeah, so let's get, let's get to cleaning. That's the next step. interesting things you find. Uh, we picked this up walking this old, um, uh, what used to be a railroad trail, railroad bed, 
uh, in this old walking trail, I believe in uh, New Mexico. It's a really ancient, ancient rail spike. You can probably see how old it is just by how little there is left. Anyway, I'm going to continue vacuuming and cleaning up. There was a time when these floor mats looked brand new. Ten years of being in there and wearing them down. So I'm going to see what I can do. Clean them up. i got to probably heat it up to get rid of that warping. And then I'll just put some essentially rubber protectorant on them to shine them up a little bit. That is not Nacho. That is one of the strays that we feed. She, he just ate and now he's happy. Hopefully I won't scare him with the hooves. I was going to use car wash, but I found this stuff in the garage, so we'll see. It's certainly better for these things, because those things are really, really covered. Probably a little light for these. It'll work, though. I'll just mix it with water. I can't find my nylon brush, unfortunately. I don't know where I put it. If I could remember what project I last used it on, I could probably figure out where it is. But I don't remember that. I had two of them. That's even worse. I've now lost both. You know what? I just got an idea. Maybe I do know where it is. At least one of them. Well, well lo and behold, I had put it away. Something that I don't apparently do enough that I believed I, it would be where it should be. And this is my spare, but at least it was where it should be. And these are good because these are all textured. So I can get in there real quick with this and I'll spend all day doing it. If it was hot out today, I'd just lay it out in the sun and it would flatten right out, but it's not hot out. I mean, it's 78, but it's not sunny. And 78 in Florida in November. It does not feel all that hot. Oh, there's a lot of crap coming off these. Look at how brown it's getting. Let's see. See that brown water come off them. These pieces actually go inside the center console beneath the cup holders and whatever that other thing is. to get the gunk off and there's something sticky on them. Who knows what? Ten years of road trips could be anything. Okay, before 
putting seat covers on, I've got everything cleaned. Pretty looks pretty good. But um, before putting seat covers on, I recommend um, doing a good coat of leather treatment since they'll be under the seat covers for a long time now. Probably uh, for as long as I own it. So I've used this stuff, I don't know, on 10 years. And as I was saying, these seats lasted through all these road trips and working with it and 100,000 more miles. So it was 205,000 miles and, I, and the leather's still not that bad. So I recommend this stuff. You can get it, I guess, on Amazon or something. And interestingly, it has a faint smell of donuts. I don't know why, but... So I'm going to do... I, I do the dashboard with it as well um, and the door panels, but mo mostly I do the seats. So first I'll do the seats. i got a rag. And once the rag is saturated with the stuff, I'll just go over the dashboard and door panels. Um, but let's get to that. Uh, I can't use the camera too much because the battery is... And the camera's dying and I'm actually tethered right now um, so let me let me put the leather treatment on the seats and then we'll move on to the seat covers okay seats are all treated and soaked pretty much dry at this point so we're going to put seat covers on i am not a fan of seat covers generally um, but i will say if you do put seat covers on these um, the ones i'm going to show you look fantastic and um, they look like they're there for a reason they're not just hiding worn seats, um, but make sure you buy, these things actually have side airbags in them. So make sure you buy the correct ones in case you get in an accident. You don't want this blowing up under a seat cover. But the first step to these is you gotta get the headrests off. And I apologize, I am tethered still. Um, in a little while, it'll be charging up. So to do that, see this little hole in here? Right? Yeah, if I can get it. Yeah, see that little hole? You gotta put something in there and push. Let me put the phone down for a second. And while you push that, you lift the headrest up and then do the other side. And once you've done both sides, you see there's little locking pins in here. Once you've done both sides, it comes right out. Now to do these seat covers, these do have to come off. So I'm gonna do the other side and then I'll be right back. Same thing, push in. And you can see a little bit better now. See this little, see this little hole right here? Uh, you can probably do it with a very small screwdriver. I just do it with this, push it in. Headrest comes off. All right, I'm gonna do the other side. I'll be right back. Okay, here are the seat covers. These are actually called tactical seat covers. They're pretty cool. They look very much like something you'd find off-road military. Um, made by Cover King. I did not buy these from Cover King because um, I was able to get them for almost $100 cheaper on Realtruck.com. No endorsement of the site. They gave me these. I wish they had. Um, but they'll run you, or at least they ran me, about $200 for the front seat. I'm not doing the back seat. Um, you may think that's a lot, um, but let's see what you think after I've got them on. So there are, a lot, there's a lot of pieces to these. You got bottoms, sides, backs, headrests, and armrests. So let's, uh, let me get to work. Let me see if I can figure out which goes on what, because they do not mark them and they, do not give you any directions other than go to the website. But here's a little tip. That I think is one of the bottoms. These, uh, these are actually a little bit different than the ones I put on my avalanche. And my avalanche should have had the same exact seats as these. Hopefully it's not a problem. On my avalanche, this corner was heavy on the side that gets tucked in. Um, on these, it's not. No idea why that would be. But let's see if I have any luck. Um, these go under the actual seat and not on the back, on the, on the underside of the base, so to stop it from slipping. This is extra stuff that goes on the back of the seat if you want it. Um, it hooks into these. They're called, uh, I think, Molly strips. So let me get to work. Let me see what I can find. See if I can figure this out. Okay, I guessed right. 
uh, here's how they go. That's, that goes around that seat belt. These tuck under. This goes around this seat belt and Velcros. So that's that's how you tell which side is which. And perhaps these are a little different than my Avalanche because of this. I don't think my Avalanche has that. My Avalanche actually has a plastic thing right up here so that these tuck into. Unfortunately, these won't tuck into anything. But um, we'll see how tight they fit. But interestingly enough, um, they are they are different, so they must be made. They're custom made for this vehicle. So let's see, let's see how they go on. Well, no one said it would be easy. Well, I got the first one on. It takes them a little while for the wrinkles and stuff to come out of them and for them to smooth out and fit around the seats, but it does have the pockets for the airbags. Seatbelts fit right. That was not fun to get on, this headrest, Jesus. When I put them on the Avalanche, they slid right over. These guys, I had to wrestle with them. Um, because of the fact that this is different than the Avalanche, I'm not exactly sure how that's supposed to be or where that strap is supposed to go. Um, but I'll figure that out. Uh, I'll show you the backs. So see, they got these little clips. You can hang water bottles, almost anything you want on them. It's pretty cool. They, they really look nice once they settle. In fact, while I'm at it, I will show you because they've been on my Avalanche now for a while. So if I got the keys, I'll show you what they, these are black, but the Avalanche does not have the gray interior. It's very different. So here you go. So see, this panel is different on the Avalanche, so they actually can tuck in there. Um, but yeah, I like how they give you an armrest cover. Everything. You, can see, you can see how loose these are compared to the other ones. And the other ones I had to wrestle with, but they fit They fit pretty good. Once I got them on, this is wrong. This is supposed to be like that, but it's a little tricky putting the seatbelt on with this, with that thing clipped. But um, I'll show you the back with the, with the uh, pockets filled out. So you got everything in here. Um, look at that, how cool that is. Got a water bottle, emergency equipment, pretty cool. So I'm not looking forward to it, but let me get started on the other one. Once you get the seat, the seat bottom on, that's the hard part. That's the part where you scratch yourself up. They give you some gloves, but that makes it even more difficult to get the uh, straps under here. And they could design these a bit better. I'll show you what I mean. This, this piece goes here. Uh, so when I talk about, I could design these a little bit better. This is the back, right? And this has to tuck between the seat back and the seat. And then you pull these straps out. Then you gotta go under the seat with these. And these, you gotta slide them. See, so you gotta slide these pretty much. To the end. Let me put the phone down for a second. And this goes under all the springs and motors and everything and hooks to this. So here's the problem. Because this piece here is so long, this this strap here is so long, and this strap is when you hook this up. I'm sorry, I'm doing this with one hand. When you hook this up and then you have to pull this tight, you're under the seat. Whereas if this clip was simply right here, you could pull it easier. And now maybe they do that just for a cleaner look, but um, this is not the easiest thing. It looks like, oh, look at how nice that goes. Yeah, try doing that. Try pulling that thing through when you've got two inches of clearance and springs and motors and everything stabbing into your hand and it just doesn't want to move. And that's, that's the battle with these things. Um, once you get these two straps on and tight, as tight as you can get them, and they never get that very, very tight, because by the time you've got it so it's getting pretty tight, you are so far under the seat that you can't pull this strap anymore. It won't, it will, just won't move. So um, anyway, that's the battle with these. But I'm gonna get this guy on and uh, 
start off by pulling these all the way to the end because this isn't fun. Now, they do give you a tool. i to put the phone down again to do this. They give you this uh, little blue arm thing. I don't know what I do with it. Um, so they give you this great book, right? And you're like, oh, this will show me how to put them on. There, there is no directions in this. It's a sales catalog. That, to me, is dumb. They should, they should uh, give you a little help instead of saying go to a website. And ironically, when you go to the website, which I did for my Avalanche, just to see if I was doing these things right. So when you go to the website, it's not about these seat covers. It's just some generic seat cover installation. So I'm going to get the tripod. I got enough battery charge. I'm going to try to show you kind of how to do this. Um, be patient with me, these are a struggle. I will do my best to demonstrate without <coughs> vocalizing any obscenities. Because after doing one, it gets a little stressful. These seats are, are tight here too. They don't, they don't like you to push anything through here. Find just the right spot. This is not the difficult part, by the way. This is actually the very easy part. Once you get these through, you go back there, find them, and pull it tight. Pull that flap through, get it through a good amount, and go back. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, that doesn't look hard at all. Well, that part's not hard at all. It isn't. And this, this part, cutting on the seat belt. Well, there is a clip there. I did not know that. There's a clip there. So I pulled them very tight. So I'm going to pull a little bit of the slack back. That just goes right there. If you can see, that goes right flat on the seat. This goes down on top of it. Let's clip this piece. That's where your seat belt goes through that. These just get stuck on that anyway. It's not, not the greatest. It's there. Okay, now comes the fun part. Now, you can choose, I hope you can see this, you can choose to use this, and how you use that is you take this and you tuck it in here and feed it through under the seat. And, you know, I guess it works. If you can find a clear path, and in this seat with motors and the heater under there, you can get about halfway then go to the other side, reach through, and pull it. I guess if you do these all the time, you become a pro at them. And these minor grievances don't bother you so much. Right. I had my glasses on the whole time and I never lost them. I don't know how that happened. Okay, do the second one, put it in that little clip thing. I found something under the seat that I have no idea what it is, but I would guess it's some type of carry holster. Not mine. Been under there for 
20 years, I guess. All right, so now comes the fun part. You got this in place. You got your pad under there, hopefully in the right spot. Looks like it. So we're going to go back there and try to get these clips on. So the clips, I've got them latched. Let me see. I've got them latched. I'm going to roll the seat forward. That gives me just a little bit more room back here. So I gotta, I'll actually do it from the other side so you can see the struggle is real with these. All right, so you got this and it's nice and loose and you want it tight. Well, it's easy to get it started tighter, um, but then pretty soon, see, you're very loose and now you're well under the seat. And every time you pull it a little bit tighter, you get further under the seat. So the question is, how tight do they want these? And I bet it's more tighter than you can actually get them. See, at a certain point, you just can't get them. Oh, that worked. That worked. I got that one pretty tight. That's good. That's tighter than the other side. Now I get to do this one. It's the same struggle. Really easy at first. It gets progressively, like a video game, it gets progressively harder with each pull. I got a wire right there. It's right in the way. I just don't know. How am I supposed to do that? I wonder, I wonder if that blue tool would help this. If I could use that to push through. So let's see. If I hook this thing onto this end, maybe this is something that's explained in the video that doesn't exist. Let's see. Is this working? No. It does not work. Well, maybe. It's not as tight as that one. But I'm kind of at a loss here. Let's see if I can do it with my thumb. This is the hardest part. The rest of it's actually not hard at all. Oh, I got it. It moved. Look at that. All right, all right. So I didn't cut myself. Just a few minor scrapes. I got it on. That's how you do it. I hope you can see. Hope that camera's aimed right because it doesn't look like it is. Oh, good. So you can hopefully. Hopefully you saw some of that. Um, all right, now let's do the the top piece. And this is not hard. Um, you just gotta watch your seatbelt and uh, let me grab the part. All right, so these have a zipper on it. Just unzip this all the way. You have to unzip it all the way because it has to go around this and the seatbelt has to go through it. So just throw the back over it. Watch the Velcro piece. This goes right there. 
This goes in here, your seatbelt goes under it, and then latch this in the zipper, and then zip it down. These are, I will say, these zippers are decidedly easier than my Avalanche. This this piece here, if you can see, am I showing this? Let me do it by hand here. So you got this piece of black cloth here, like the straps. Um, this entire thing, this has to go through and under the seat. And then it supposedly Velcros the other side, that's what they say. I don't know, it kind of does. Um, these are for the side impact airbags. Pull that, and let's do the zipper. Let's see if I can do it with one hand, I doubt it. No, I can't, all right. That tight. All right, see? That tightens that up. Headrest goes in there. Pull that down. See if I can find that black fabric I was pulling through. I can feel it if I can get it to. Okay, there's a piece of it. Let's see if I can get the rest. All right, so I'm gonna grab that. Give it a tug. That actually then gets tucked up under here. And there's Velcro, I believe. Oh, there's Velcro on the back of that. And it kind of holds it up. I don't know if it's supposed to be tight or fastened or something. It doesn't seem to, but it does hold it up. Oh, I had this Velcro right on the camera. That's the back. We got the straps. Your seat belt piece. I gotta figure out what to do with these guys. I mean, I don't know. Maybe this hook just goes under the seat somewhere. It certainly seems that's all it would do. There's a bar here. I might, I don't, I don't know if you can see that. What I'm gonna do is pull this around. I gotta put the camera down. Hold on. Pull that tight. Wrap it around. Man, it's hooked. Okay, so I did. If you can see it, a little dark under here. I hooked, just hooked it on a bar there. What is that? Okay, um, and again, this one here, I don't really know, since there's no directions, what it's supposed to hook to. So this strap here, I'm not really sure what it should hook to, but maybe that. <sighs> Hopefully, uh, Captured on that. And I got a strap on the inside of each seat um, that I've got to put on, but let's do the headrest. Let me show you. Tuck this thing in. Side impact airbag piece. It doesn't seem to fit very well without wrinkles. Um, the headrests, I'm gonna bring the tripod here because they're a, they're a trip. Um, like I said, when I did my avalanche, they just slid right on top. Hi, Leroy. Um, but, but with these, my God, they do not want to go on. I'll put this tripod down. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so first off, you assume there's a front and a back to this thing? I don't know what it is. I mean, would it kill him to say that? Because the stitches are a little bit different. I guess. I don't know. But... I have no idea if this even matters. So... This is the front of the headrest. I'm gonna try to get this thing on here. I'm telling you. It's nothing like the Avalanche. The Avalanche, they just slid right on. I was like, wow, these are loose. These aren't loose. These things look like they're two sizes too small. I'm gonna crush the headrest inside it. evenly save you some fabric I guess 
It shows how strong these are, though. That's one of the things I like about them. They wear like iron. They, they call them Kevlar. I don't know. aggressive on one side, not aggressive enough on the other side. Anyway, you get the gist, that's it. Not even, but that's how they go on. And then you just Velcro these pieces like this in the bottom. I'm gonna straighten this one out and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, once you've got it on, just locate your holes in here. Doing it one-handed, so a little trickier. And push it down. Okay, last piece is the armrest. That piece goes in there and Velcros around to this piece here. Let me take care of that. And these, pretty self-explanatory. Except for how the Velcro actually is supposed to go back on once you get this thing on here. So uh, I have yet to figure out how the Velcro goes on. So I just... Don't even worry about it. Just tuck it in on my on my avalanche. They've completely stayed in place without the Velcro. And then you can pick them up once this thing stretches out a little bit. That's it. All right. I'm gonna put my seats back down. I did pull out a lot more debris while I was doing that. another attempt at tightening up this one under there I got a little bit lucky with the other one so I'm gonna try it again with this um, so let me do that and then we'll take a look at uh, how it all looks okay I'm pretty much done for the day uh, I've got the seat covers on I got the interior cleaned up nice I just got to put everything away so let's take a look um, I put this dash pad on here this this was in my avalanche when I bought it um, somehow this dashboard survived 22 years without cracking. These things crack real easy, um, but I've never really had a pad on it. I have always had a sunscreen in the window, um, but so I'm going to use it for this. It's the right color anyway. Here's the seat covers. They're on. Um, wear like iron. Once they smooth out and settle down, I'm just going to tie that piece down. Um, to look good and, uh, protect the seats. I'll show you the back. So with the seats up, I, I put some patch, pouches there. There's a couple behind here that I won't use just so I don't lose them. And uh, we're almost ready for the wood to go back there. Uh, for tonight, I'm going to put all this stuff back in to here. Um, oh, yeah, let's look at my floor mats. They came out good. You know, that was just simply green. That's all I used on them. I didn't even put any... Uh, protector into or anything on them they just came out nice the way they were geez look at all the dust i got from under the seats good thing i got the vacuum cleaner still out i'll hit that my other project coming up is going to be this um i gotta figure out what to do it's starting to come loose uh certainly it's coming loose off the sunroof uh, i don't want to put a new headliner in too expensive but uh that's it i gotta put all this stuff away without getting this thing dirty but overall, it came out good. The sides came out nice. I didn't use any protectorant on those either, but I, I uh, did use some of the leather leather stuff on them. I think for some of the deep scratches, I might try a little black shoe polish on a rag. Just rub it in and color the plastic. I just got to make sure it doesn't color anything else gray. That's it. I hope you found this video fun, interesting. Uh, maybe uh, you learned something. Uh, don't be intimidated. Again, as I always say, 
Go out and get busy. Have a good night.